All right, alien dictionary. So they give us some words, and these words are in some like English, English alien alphabet. So um, if we look at these first two words. Uh, we, we're assuming that these words are in alphabetical order, but if we look at these first two, so we have WRT and WRF. Well, the first difference is this T and this F between these two words, which means that uh, letter T actually comes before F in this alien language. So what they want us to do is they want us to turn uh, these letters into a directed graph, and then we want to topologically sort that directed graph. And if you don't know what a topological sort is, uh, let me just give you a quick explanation. So topological sort is given a direct graph, then return an array of nodes where each node appears appears before all the nodes it points to, in the, or all the nodes it comes before in the graph. So, okay, so yeah, given a directed graph, turn an array of nodes where each node appears for all the nodes that it comes before in the graph. So like, let me give you a quick example. So like if, let's say we have A pointing to B pointing to uh, C, and then we also have say, I don't know, Z pointing to H. Then, so we have these two separate components, right? But this is still considered one graph, this whole thing. Well, if we were gonna return uh, these nodes in the correct topological order, well then A would have to come before B and B would have to come before C and A would also have to come before C as well. So like as long as A comes before uh, these two, then we're good. And as long as B comes before these two, then we're good. And then the Z has to show up before the H. And because these are not like connected, like this, we can actually do, um, we can put the ZH before or after, it doesn't matter. Uh, so both of these would be, to uh, so this would be a valid topological sorting and this would be a valid topological sorting. Okay, and you could think of this like in, in like real life, you could think of this as maybe like, um, maybe this is like heating up your oatmeal and this is actually eating your oatmeal. And this is like you brushing your teeth. Like if A is brushing your teeth, we could just do that. So brushing your teeth and this could be heating up oatmeal and eating oatmeal. So we could eat, we could heat up our oatmeal and eat it before we brush our teeth, or we could brush our teeth first and then, you know, uh, eat after, you know, it's whatever your preference is. Uh, that's basically what this is saying when we could just put it in whatever order we want. Okay. Um, so let's actually get to the code. So first we're going to build a graph out of this. So let's make an adjacency list. So we're going to make a, a map of characters to a list of characters. So we'll just call it adjacency list. So it's new hash map. Cool. And then we're going to go through every word in the words, and then we're going to go through every character uh, in those words. So i is less than word.length plus plus i, and we just want to say adjacency list dot put word dot char at i. Uh, and we just want to put a new array list. Cool. Okay, cool. So we now have an empty array list, but we populated it with all of our characters. Okay, now we need to actually populate the edges in this adjacency list. So we're going to, again, loop through our words. So let's just do i0, i0. Actually, this needs to be 1. So we're going to compare two words at a time. So we need to, in order to find what letters come before which letters, we need to uh, compare two words at a time and look for the first difference between those two words. So uh, just, just let me just type this out. Cool. So now... Let's say, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a helper method because it'll look nice. And we're going to say, we're going to call this difference. So these are the two characters that were the difference in our two words. So we'll just say get difference here. And I'm going to write this helper method in a second. We're going to pass in words i minus one and words at i. Cool. So now what we're going to do is if the difference is not equal to null, and we're going to add that difference to our JCC list. So, or we're going to add this edge to our JCC list because now we know that the the first character points to this character in our alphabet, or it comes before that character in the alphabet. So, uh, let's get 
the difference dot get key and add difference dot get value. So let, I'll explain what I'm doing in a second. So all I'm doing is so difference get key is going to get the first character in this word that was differing from the character in the second word. And we're going to add that second word uh, to our edges uh, for the, the, for the letter in the first word. Okay, so which means that that means that this letter comes before this letter in the alphabet in this alien alphabet. Okay, so <clears throat> now, okay, so if we're not done, quite done yet, so if the difference is not null, that's what we did. But if the difference is null, we need to check if the first word that we compared, we need to check if its length is greater than uh, our second word, because if it is greater, uh, this is not a valid, like, it's not basically not a valid input. Um, so we need to return an empty string because like, for example, let's just, let's just say, let's just take a, a normal, normal English. Let's say we have cat and cat in the dictionary must appear before catfish, right? Well, there's, we, there is no difference between cat and cat fish here. I mean, yeah, there, we do, we have some extra letters here, but we don't count these because this doesn't give us any extra information. But basically when there's no difference, looking at the minimum lengths of between the two, which cat and cat, there's no difference. We need to make sure that this first word is shorter than this word because catfish cannot appear in the dictionary before cat because this is shorter, right? If we look at a dictionary, whenever there's uh, yeah, if you ever look in a dictionary, if whenever there's um, matching characters, but like one is longer, the shorter word has to come first in the dictionary. So that's why we're doing this little check here. All right, this little check here. Cool. All right, so now we populated our our JSON list, and now we can start our. Oh, we need to write this get difference method really quick. So let's do public or no private. So we don't need to do private. Um, pair. Uh, this is what it's returning. Turning a pair of turning a pair of characters and calling it get difference and it's going to be s1 string s2 and we're going to get the length the minimum length between the two so math.min s1 dot length s2 dot length cool now we have the minimum length between the two and then we're going to loop through it so i is less than this length plus i and then if s1.char at i is not equal to s2.char at i, then we can return this difference. This is the first difference, right? Cool. So s1.char at i and s2.char at i. We return the difference, and we should never find a difference, so just return null. Cool. Now we can um, actually do our depth first search. So let's loop through all of the characters in our adjacency list. So this is going to be some letter in adjacency list dot key set. So these are all the letters we added to our adjacency list. And if we can't add the letter, so I'm going to write this method in a second. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to add this letter to our string that we're going to return. So I'm going to create a string builder really quick. And I can actually give this a capacity. We'll just make this adjacency lit. Actually, can't do I know the the number of? Mm, yeah, it should be adjacency list dot size because this is the number of letters that we encountered in our alpha in our alien alphabet. So, uh, the string builder will never hold. Well, the string builder will all will is guaranteed to hold this amount unless we okay. So anyway, uh. This is just so I'm just this is just the capacity that I'm, it's just an optimization I'm making. Okay, so uh, add a letter. We want to add the letter to our string builder, but if we weren't able to add the letter to our string builder, then that means that we encountered a cycle in our in our directed graph. If we encountered a cycle in our directed graph, we don't have a valid. There's it's not it's not possible to return a valid topological sorting. So we're going to return the empty string uh, because if we have a cycle in our directed graph, that means that two letters are pointing to each other either directly or indirectly via some nodes there's some cycle between them so we'll never be able to return uh yeah so basically cycles are bad if for topological sorting because it's not possible to return a valid topological sorting okay so anyway um 
let's what am i doing here so we added the letter we need to pass in oh okay so we need so in order to detect the cycle we need to keep track of what nodes we've seen on the current like recursion stack path um because if we when we're depth for searching any node that we've already encountered in the same path or if we encounter an, the same node in the same path then that means we have a cycle so we need to keep track of our let's i'm just going to call it a state of our nodes and this is going to be i'll just make the size 26 because we're only dealing with lowercase letters and this state is just going to hold whether we visited the node or whether it's in our current path or our current recursion stack if it's in our current recursion stack that means it's in our current path and if we've seen that node twice in this recursion path or whatever you want to call it um that means that there's a cycle so let me create some really quick uh private final let's just do private final static uh what i want to do we can say it's in in path current path i'll just say path mm, no we'll do in path equals one and then private final static int and we'll just mark this as visited equals two all right so now let's pass in this state array and I think we're good. Am I missing anything? Pass in the letter, pass in the string builder. Oh, the adjacency list. Um, let's just add that here. Okay, because we need to loop through our neighbors when we're depth for searching. And then let's, I'll get to, I'll, I'll come back to this. Okay, so let's just write our depth for search here. So private, um, what am I returning? I'm turning a Boolean to re and add a letter. So this method is just going to return true or false whether I'm able to add the letter or not. So character letter. Why did I add a comma there? Character letter. Uh, adjacency list. So this could be character list of characters. Adjacency list and the string builder. SB and the state. And let's put this on a new line so it looks nice. Cool. Now. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the index of this letter. So we're gonna do letter minus a. So like if this is letter a, a minus a is zero. And if this is letter b, b minus a is one. So this is just index. This index is so I can index into this state array. Okay. And we're gonna check if the state at this index is equal to what did I call it? In path. Okay, so if we've encountered this letter in this path already then we want to return a uh, false because that means we've encountered a cycle. And we also need to check if we visited it, because if we visited it, um, we don't want to add this letter twice. Visited just means that I was able to successfully add it before. Um, so we're just going to return true to say that, yeah, I was able to add the letter, but, but I just did it in some previous iteration or some previous DFS call. Okay, so now we're going to mark this as being in this path and then we're going to we're going to loop through our neighbors our neighboring letters in our directed graph so for every character neighbor in jt list dot get passing in the letter and we just want to say if we're not able to add the letter so we're going to we're dfsing but we're going to we want a short circuit if we're not able to add the letter. We're going to return false here. So uh, if we're not able to add the letter, but we're going to pass in, or not a letter, pass in neighbor, pass in the adjacency list, pass in the state, the string builder, and then pass in the state. Cool. Okay, so we're DFSing on the neighbors, and now we can mark this as visited. We can mark this letter as visited because we were able to successfully add it, which we're about to do. We'll append the uh letter cool and we just returned true all right so uh notice that i'm adding these letters at the bottom of the recursion stack because let's just say that i have um so let's just say this is my entire graph i have a i have b and i have c but when i'm starting my recursion my dfs where is it right here so this is where i start my recursion right in this add a letter call here, I'm going through my key set. And my key set's not like, it doesn't know what order I would ideally like to have my um, 
my letters and it's just going to give me the keys in, in essentially a random order so let's just say that hypothetically if we dfs from letter b at the very beginning if we called add a letter on letter b so let's just say this was our very first recursive call if we just said add a letter b and that's what we did right well we'd want to add so we want to append this letter at the bottom of the recursion which we're doing right we're doing the recursion here and then once we're at the bottom of the recursion then we'll append uh the we're going to append the letter c to our output first to our s to our string builder so we're going to append c and then we're going to append b and then we're going to come back up here to our key set we're going to get the letter a we're going to call add a letter on add a letter a And you know, let me, so this would have led to add letter C. So we added C here, then we added B, and then we're going to say add a letter A. And then we're going to, so that means we're going to append A at the end of this call here. So then we end up with CBA, but this is in the reverse order that we want it in. So what we have to do is return SB.reverse and then convert it to a string. So we're just reversing our, our string builder here. All right, so let's run this. What did I mess up? Uh, expect it. I always miss a bracket when I'm typing generics. All right, 25, where are you? In state, what is wrong with this? Oh, new state, it should have been new int, okay. Cool, submit it. All right, and we're done. That is how you do a depth first search. Uh, and check and do a topological sorting using depth first search. So let's go over time complexity really fast. So I like to break it down. Like, so this is going to be O of, let's say, let's say the number of words is W. And let's just call the average word length. I'm going to say average word length here. I'm just going to be super explicit. So if W is a number of words, this loop here, when we when we loop through all the characters in a word, in the worst case, this entire loop, uh, we're gonna it's gonna end up being dealt the number of words times the average word length. Okay, uh, when we're populating the adjacency list because we're just looping through every word, right? So the short words and the long words will just average out to an average word length. So this is definitely the worst case. Okay, and then here this is gonna be O of W as well, and because of this loop here. And get difference uh, is going to loop through our words, so that means that this is also going to be average word length. Um, so let's see, am I missing anything? Uh, string builder, blah, blah blah, character. Okay, oh, and then then uh, the DFS will just be O of V plus E. I think that's a really common time complexity that everyone should know for depth first search. So, uh, so V here would be the number of distinct letters in our um. In the, in the list of words that we got. So I guess you could say, I'll just leave it like this. I think this is good. So, um, and then E would be the edges between those letters, right? Okay, so our total time complexity is gonna end up being O of W times the average word length plus uh, V plus E. Okay, so that's our total time complexity right there. And again, V is the, oh, yeah, you guys can figure that out. All right, so, um, o, so now let's do the space really quick. Um, the space is gonna be O of V plus E because of uh, our adjacency list here, because we added all of the the nodes, I guess, or the distinct letters in our, in our list of words. And we added the edges between those, uh, between those letters into our adjacency list. That's what our space is gonna end up being. And yeah, I think that's it. Um, so yeah, if you like the video, you can give it a thumbs up and you can subscribe if you want. Cool, bye.